Hi, and welcome to Good Chats, a show that's intended to inspire hope, wellness, and gratitude even in the midst of crisis. If this is your first time joining us, I am Jenny Landon, the founder and executive director of Growing Out of Darkness. Our focus is to end stigma and save lives by improving upon the way we speak and think about mental health, as well as how we seek treatment for it. Before we begin, I'd love to thank our gold and platinum sponsors, Shoreview Kowalskis, Alexander Plumbing, and Doug Desert Construction. Today's topic is going to be on the importance of healthy relationships. Now this is a topic that is near and dear to my heart. I actually speak about it often. Um, I often refer to it as meaningful connections. I believe that I would not be where I am today if it weren't for the people in my life. And I'm not just talking about the people who've been in my life for 40 years, 20 years, or even 10. I'm talking about those connections that sometimes happen over the matter of minutes. I think it's important that we all reach out to the people that we see every day and simply try to make a connection. Today I have joining me Brandon Jones, who is a psychotherapist, a professor, and the author of Healing is a Journey. Mm -hmm. Having um, Brandon here is very exciting, and then Thank we you. are also welcoming Eric Re Dr. Eric Rees to the show. And Eric is a chiropractic functional neurologist. Thank you, both of you, for joining us today as we Thank talk you. about healthy relationships. Um, so I know that this is a topic that is near and dear to both of you, yes. and so I'd like to start, actually, Brandon, with you. Why yeah. are you so passionate about healthy relationships? Yeah. Um, I'm so passionate about it because I think it's one of those things that's given. People feel like they generally have healthy relationships, but from a therapeutic standpoint, when I'm helping people, a lot of times they realize they don't have the healthiest relationships and that's contributing to their mental distress or their you know their mental health diagnosis is that they don't feel like they have that social support they don't feel connected they don't feel like they belong and then that ends up leading them to other types of symptoms and it leads them to the couch uh, as I like to call it in therapy so healthy relationships are important on many different levels whether it's intimate family relationships neighbors um, even workplaces you know think about a job that you didn't like chances were there were some coworkers or a boss or a supervisor that you didn't like either. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And I, I really, I love that you touched on neighbors. Um, mm -hmm. My family, we've moved several times over the last 15 years. And I can honestly say that in the different places we've lived, um, there's really only been two places where I felt like we knew who our neighbors were. Yeah. And it was amazing how grounded and safe we felt in those environments versus when you basically are just pulling up to a house that you call your home. And it feels great on the inside, right. but what's going on yeah, out there? Around, yeah. um, and uh, Eric, how about you? What, uh, what is it about healthy relationships that really um, draws you in? Well, I think just from the beginning, humans are social animals, right? And this is such a relevant topic for me seeing patients because in the end, patients like, don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Yeah. And setting a relationship or setting a precedence of you having this give and take interaction with another person is such an important aspect to healing and more importantly to recovering and then honestly like building trust yeah. relationships really are about building trust whether that's a personal a professional or you know a setting in a clinic and so um, relationships can be a game changer in so many different facets and so uh, there was a phenomenal book written by um, John Maxwell uh, and uh, the title was um, everybody communicate everybody communicates but few connect Mm -hmm. And so a relationship really is an enhanced version of a connection, right? We yes. all have the ability to speak and talk and communicate, but to connect with another human uh, is something that you really can't buy right. and you really have to kind of work for. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, we've all had those relationships where you meet somebody and the first 30 seconds you're like, wow, this, this person made me feel so different than somebody who I've known for 10, 15 years, right. who I've struggled trying to maintain. Uh, some status quo with or okay. trying to get their attention or have that friendship that you've always sought after so relationships are something that we all deal with on a daily basis right. uh, and to understand them on a deeper level is really something that we can all uh, be fortunate enough to 
uh, benefit from. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Now, I am a firm believer. Um, you know, it's it is September. It is Suicide Prevention Month. So I want to I want to talk about that for just a second because I'm a firm believer that suicide takes place when there's three factors involved, mm -hmm. and that is extreme distress, isolation, and loss of hope. And I think that when we are really connected to people and we are, are having those relationships, that it is something that can save a life. Right. You know, and, and when you see someone struggling who, you know, is having a hard time, and I know how difficult that can be to, to watch them struggle, but if you can just be patient and recognize that they are having a fight within themselves that most of us can't see. Right. And if you can just reach out to them and communicate to them that you know they're hurting and, and that you want to be there for them, that you know, you're know you there any way you can, mm -hmm. that that is helping them to feel less isolated and potentially giving them that spark of hope that they need. Right, absolutely. <clears throat> that actually reminds me of a concept that I have called the universal goal. And it's an idea that I have that most people strive for three things, security, significance, and belonging. Mm -hmm. And security, oftentimes we think of security as like, I'm safe, but really it's about how comfortable you are. Mm -hmm. And the way I like to articulate that is, you know, if you have a modern car, you usually have an alarm system, you have the little chirp, beep beep, on your car, right? Mm -hmm. But that's not gonna prevent anyone from stealing your car, but it does make you feel a little bit more secure when you do that. And then the significance piece is like, why do I matter? Um, mm -hmm. You know, what ma what's my purpose? Why do I matter? What makes me significant, et cetera? And then the belonging piece is the piece that's very huge is who am I connected to? Um, who can I go to for support? Who's there to care for me and my needs, et cetera? And I think most human beings um, kind of associate ourselves with those three kind of desires. And when one of those things are out of whack, then we start to see that mental distress kind of peak up and things like suicide are introduced into a lot of people's um, mm -hmm. concepts of life. So, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Well, one of the biggest indicators and factors for quality of life and the longevity of life, I think the number one thing that they're finding out now is really just having quality relationships. Yes. The ability for people to connect with others, have conversations, be real and honest. And I think more importantly, too, you know, the, the culmination of all of this together is really just having people be able to have those conversations. There's such yeah. a stigma that We've made a lot of groundwork on over the last decade, but we're still not there yet about yeah. people having conversations. And more importantly, too, uh, you're shattering these stigmas that males and females both have about right. what they can and can't talk about, mm -hmm. masculinity, yeah. different perspectives. When we touched on it on last week's episode about you know parents who stay at home, mm -hmm. like those are very interesting and very diverse concepts that we have to really break down, but more importantly, have a conversation. Right. Yeah. And so many people, especially in 2019, my millennial generation, <laughs> everyone talks about, you know, yep. people want to just hide behind a social media status yeah. Yeah. or not have a conversation face to face. And so when yeah. you actually engage in that, neurologically, there are different areas of your brain that you engage. Right. Uh, you have a different perspective on that, but more importantly, it affects you in a very different way as well right. too. And that brings up a really good point because there's a lot of conversations around um, youth who are struggling with their mental health. And, and I am a firm believer that we have too many kids spending too much time on screens. And, and even though there is engagement, you know, some kids will say, oh, but I'm playing a game with my friend and it's just, a, it's virtual. It's not the same. It doesn't light up that little part of our brain that gives us the endorphin to feel connected and to feel like we belong. And so we really need to be encouraging our children, um, our young people, even ourselves. I think, you know, a lot of adults want to talk about, well, kids do it. Yeah. Well, come on. If we're being honest, we all spend way too much time yeah. behind our phones. Yeah. You know, it's like every time we, we end up in a line, we're behind our phone, yeah. you know, and, and, I'm one of those people who, you know, when my mother-in-law comes to visit and I take her to the grocery store with me, it will take us an hour to get through the store yeah. because I talk to everyone there. Yeah. Like, I know everyone that works there and, um, and she just doesn't want to go to the store with me anymore. Right. <laughs> so, um, but, you know, I want to I go back to, because I know that for you, um, helping people understand what a healthy relationship looks like yeah. what what is that yeah so the way that I define it is a healthy relationship has is either a bond or a commitment that you have with another person or several people where there's a benefit and a sacrifice and there's no harm being done but there's some constructive impact that's taking place so 
in the context of like an intimate relationship, you know, you are sacrificing something with your partner, whether that's your time, it might be you moved to a different city or you gave up your career, whatever the case may be, you're giving up a sacrifice to be with this individual, but then what's the result? You have a loving relationship, you have someone who cares about you, you have someone who encourages you, um, you have someone who um, motivates you to do different things. That's typically what I, I like to um, encourage people to see um, if they have them in their actual relationships or not. Uh, I think a lot of people can define what an unhealthy relationship is, but when we start to break down a healthy relationship, it gets a little bit tougher because we don't always see it in everyday life. Yeah, and yeah. you and I were talking about this the other day. Um, there's, a, there's a great book that I started reading by Mark Gunger. Hopefully I'm getting his name yeah. right. Um, and I believe it's called um, How to Laugh Your Way to a Be Better Marriage. Mm -hmm. And he really talks about that perception, yep. right? Like, what is your perception of marriage? Mm -hmm. And and is it achievable? Right. Because I think there's a lot of people who look at their relationship, especially if they've been married for, you know, I think for some people even by two or three years yeah. where the spark is gone and the excitement right. is gone. And it's like, how did we end up yep. here? Yeah. I've been married for 20 years, and I've asked myself that question probably every year, mm -hmm. like every year. <laughs> I love you, honey, but seriously. Yeah. Like, and he knows it. He knows I've asked it, which is yeah. why we read all these books. And, yeah. and we go, actually, to work on our relationship. Um, we made a promise to each other to go to a class together every yep. year that is focused on our marriage. Yep. And, um, and that's how I discovered this book is because I'm going to go to a class. Yep. Um, but I do think it's important that we're looking at, you know, not just the perspective of what does marriage look like. When I read this chapter, it made me think about what is my perspective on what being a good mom right. is. Right. You know, and it was interesting because that day my daughter's fish died and she was really sad and I was asking her for help on something mm -hmm. to help another human being. And she looked at me and she goes, mom, my fish just died. Mm -hmm. And my response to her was not good. Right. I looked at her and I said, yeah, well, when my mom died, I still had to help other people. Mm -hmm. I think you can deal with this. Yeah. And I walked away and I went, oh my gosh, right. that is not who I want to be. That is not how I want to treat my child. And I walked back into her yeah. and I said, Kaylee, I am so sorry right. because my perspective of what it means to be a good mom is that I'm going to be here for you and that I'm going to teach you what it means to be a good person. Right. And how I just talked to you was not okay. I am so sorry. Right. You know, but I think we have to take ownership Absolutely. in in our relationships that we can't just expect the other person to do all the hard work. Right. Yeah. And I, and I mean, that's a great story. And I think you did two key things. One, you gave context back to your daughter, why you express yourself the way you express yourself. And then you apologize, which mm -hmm. is something that doesn't happen to adolescents or young people a lot is they get an apology from an mm -hmm. adult. Um, so those are key things, and that's what will continue to build a healthy relationship between you and your daughter is that you can be authentic with her. Um, you can you know, let her know kind of what's going on inside and let her know that you, have, you can be wrong as well. Mm -hmm. So that's awesome. Well, I think it uh, kind of just uh, exemplifies a point, too, of you are continuously trying to learn how to better yourself. Mm -hmm. You and your husband have taken steps together to grow together, and I think that's a really important you know, uh, concept that a lot of people forget about is growing together and making sure that you both are going to have different stages in your life. One of you might be at the peak of your career, one of you might be at the complete opposite, and that role will, will switch at times. Maybe it'll switch multiple times throughout your life. Uh, those are things you can't foresee, but to give yourself the ability to have that growth mindset versus that fixed mindset is huge. And uh, I, I love the quote uh, where it talks about, you know, surround yourself by those who seek the truth, but beware of those who have found it, right? Anytime you absolutely draw a line in the sand and say, this is exactly how it is, uh, you're, you're going to be humbled sometime in your life. And in medicine, it, that's super important, too, because every fact has a half-life, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, things that we used to practice as a standard protocol 10, 15 years ago, right. now today would be labeled malpractice. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same thing, whether it's in medicine or your personal relationships or your professional relationships, you have to be willing to grow and change and adapt. And we all have biases. 
you have to just go through and really challenge that on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. I love that you guys take time to do that every year because it's an important time for you. And going back to last week's episode too, you know, you have to have that self-reflection, that self-care. It's a great way for you to just know you're always going to have that in. Right. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and just to add on to that, relationships aren't supposed to stay the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think a lot of times we get married or we get in a relationship and we expect that honeymoon phase to kind of stay, but then we have things like the seven-year itch and things like that where things have changed. You've grown, your partner's grown, yep. um, and your relationship's supposed to grow as well, and a lot of times our expectations of who we're with stay the same. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you have to be open-minded and have that growth mindset. That's Agreed. a great point. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, Brandon, you and I were talking uh, last week as we were preparing for this show, and one of the things that I think we both felt was really important was having a healthy relationship with yourself. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. 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 You want to speak on that? Yeah. Um, one of the things I encourage clients or people that I work with to do is not always look out the mirror or look out the window and look in the mirror mm-hmm. um, to kind of have that self-reflective kind of piece. Because when you don't feel good about yourself, you're not going to be any good to anyone else, right? Mm -hmm. And I think that's one of the reasons why you kind of apologize to your daughter, going back to the story, is you realize, oh, I'm not in a good place right now. This is tough. And I wasn't being considerate to you, but I need to get myself together, so I'm Mm -hmm. sorry. And that's very, very important. And again, getting back to self-care, like we talked about in the previous episode, is you have to have your healthy habits in place. Otherwise, you're, you're not gonna have healthy relationships because people don't wanna be around you yeah. when you're under distress or when you have low energy or when you're agitated. Like people don't typically wanna deal with that yeah. and people will start to kinda separate themselves from you and you don't wanna be isolated. That can be a scary place, yeah. so yeah. yeah. Self-assessment's huge, yeah. mm-hmm. and that's something that n- not many of us got taught in school. Nope. I certainly didn't get <laughs> taught it in grad school, right? So uh, if you're fortunate enough to go through life with great mentors and people that you surround yourself with, mm-hmm. you will learn some of those lessons, and some people spend their entire lives without ever having that, that mm-hmm. opportunity. Yeah. And, um, you know, we've all had those instances where you, you bump into somebody, you see somebody, and they have such a negative or they have such a different reaction than what you're expecting from them. Yeah. And a lot of times people are just self-projecting some mm-hmm. of their emotions and feelings off to other people. Yeah. Yeah. And if you aren't aware of that, you will think that you did something wrong. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But if you understand and realize that those moments may be things that you didn't provoke and you didn't bring on, mm-hmm. you have to let some of that stuff go. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think that self-reflection, uh, your ability to journal, meditate, mindfulness, whatever you yeah. choose to to take take time to really self-reflect on some of that stuff is such an important key for us mm-hmm. to understand our biases and beliefs mm-hmm. and continue to grow and challenge ourselves through those stages. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah, and I think one of the dangers too when um, when we are really negative and hard on ourselves and we don't believe we're worthy, right of being in quality relationships or of having, um, you know, even good grades or, or that you deserve to be treated well by your peers or, or your parents or by, you know, whoever, um, you are going to attract people that are going to treat you the way you feel about yourself. Right. You know, and, um, and I know that, you know, my, my daughter went through a really difficult time and she was in a really dark place and she attracted other friends that were in a dark place. And what was really interesting, and she and I were actually talking about this today, was that um, both sets of parents separated them, right? And did not allow them to have contact with one another because they were both in such a dark place that it was extremely toxic and dangerous. And it's now been nine months since they had contact. And we knew my daughter was better. She was in a much better place, and she has been determined Mm -hmm. to reconnect with this friend. And he lives in another state, changed his phone number, everything. Mm -hmm. But she was on a mission, and she managed to reconnect. And I have to say that I'm really proud of her because um, I was concerned. I was a little bit leery. But she found him. She reconnected, and I said, you know what? I'm really happy for you because I know this was important to you. But we will be monitoring this relationship because if I see it going south, we're done. But what's really interesting is that he also got better during that time. And I'm so glad they reconnected because the other day she was struggling, like even just with some homework, and they were FaceTiming. 
he was able to help her with her homework, sure. right? And help her through that. And I just think, you know, for me in my mind, I'm like, we're done. We close yeah. that door, it's over. And and I think there are certain relationships you need sure. to do that with. Yeah, absolutely. But I think if the fact that she was willing to reach out to see, like, have you done your part to get healthy? Right. Like, I did my part, have you done yours? And to find that they both had, and, you know, I'm just, I'm hopeful that it stays that way and that they both end up, Right. you know, staying healthy and being in a, in a great place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes, t you know, separating yourself from people and having time away is a good thing. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important, and that can lead to having a better relationship or a healthier relationship with someone when you have space away. Um, think about a time where, like, you and your partner may be bumping heads or there might just be some, you know, some anxiety within the home. Both of you can kind of go to your own space for a time period and then reconnect later and figure out what was that troubling issue. Was it the dishes or was it the trash or whatever that thing might have been. But sometimes having that separation is good. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and time, time is such an important factor for us yeah. as well, right? I mean, we all, and we've all been guilty of this, of uh, having thoughts that run through our mind that we genuinely start believing that are completely untrue, yeah. unwarranted, have no foundation whatsoever. And so it's the same thing with relationships. You know, you get a text, you interpret it wrong, you have somebody yeah. say something, you're like, well, where'd that come from? And then all of a sudden you talk to me and they're like, what are you talking about? That was nothing, we're fine, everything's good. And you're like, I spent the last 48 hours worrying that you were mad at me, yep. right? Yeah. I mean, we all do that. And, you know, we're, we, we're, in the, we're in the 21st century and you're dealing with a million-year-old brain. And your brain was designed to seek out any stress, any threat whatsoever, yeah. and help you prolong your longevity and, and keep you alive, right? Mm -hmm. So you're, you're trying to battle with this physiology that we all have. And there are great ways to get through that and to cope with that and to actually genuinely own it. Mm -hmm. But you have to work at it. And it's never like you're going to hit this day or this moment in your life where like, I got it, I've owned it, it's done with, I can hang that, I hang my hat on that and we're good to go. You got to work on it every day right. because your brain changes every day and all of those things add up over time. And it's such an important habit to develop uh, with just being able to have conversations, build relationships, and really surround yourself with the people that you want to, that you really want to mimic too, right? So I would never take advice from anybody that I wouldn't trade places with. Mm -hmm. And so that's, for, that's personally, professionally, financially, and then psychologically too. Yeah. And I hold that pretty dear. Yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Yeah, and I think another piece of that is, um, especially with our young people, it's so easy to um, go into a relationship with someone and then invest 100% just into that one person, and then they end up losing the other friends. Mm -hmm. And so, Brian, I don't know if you want to speak on, you know, that, that concept of, you know, healthy relationships means really, you know, looking at your big picture of yeah. relationships. Yeah, I think a lot of times for people, um, especially for young people, is where is this going, right? Am I hanging out with these people because I'm socially kind of encouraged to? Mm -hmm. Or am I hanging out with these people because I'm getting something out of this relationship? Is it a status thing? Is it to not be alone? Is it to not be made fun of and bullied? What is my purpose of being around these people? Um, and I think that it's something that adults struggle with too. Is like, should I be a part of this mom group, or you know, should I be should I be with the dads, with the coaches? And you know, we have these kind of social things that set us up to kind of force us in these boxes or these circles, mm -hmm. and that might not be the place for you. So having the courage to know where your place is is very important for people because society will say your dad you're supposed to be on the field you know cheering on your kid when really you just want to kind of sit back and watch you know their glory you yeah. Know? yeah yeah for sure for sure and i think i think as parents um and we're we're watching our youth yeah. so for any parents out there and you've got your kids don't be afraid to befriend your kids friends Yes. I am friends with <laughs> all of my kids' yes. friends. Um, and, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, it's it's so important that you know who they're hanging out with yep. and and that you're monitoring and that they're aware of that. And, and I like to say that I'm the mean, scary mom, <laughs> you know, but in all right. the right ways. Right. Um, and so, but I know we are coming to a close. We're almost to the end of our show. Mm -hmm. um, and I am so grateful that I got to have both of you here um, talking woo, about relationships. Um, you know, uh, Eric, do you have any final thoughts that you want to share on healthy relationships? Yeah, I, I think, I think the, the biggest thing for me is to 
really just make sure that you never stop growing. Yeah. And, I, and I think that we've all had people come in and out of our lives for specific reasons, right? Yeah. Past relationships, personal, professional, family members we've gotten close to that we've distanced from. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all growing together. And some of those have been the best experiences that we've needed because you've maybe lost touch with somebody for a year or two and you regained and rekindled that relationship. And it was the best thing for both of you, like with your daughter and her yeah. friend. And so I think that's an important component is just to don't make your judgments too early. It's always easy to connect the dots going backwards, as Steve Jobs says. So mm -hmm. just, just understand that there are seasons for different things for a reason, yep. and that's okay. Yep. And, and be okay with that. Perfect, it. perfect. And how about you, Brandon? Yeah, I'm Any gonna, last thoughts? I'm going to piggyback off of that and give what I call the three R's. Um, you need to reach, you need to release, and you need to reconnect. So sometimes you need to reach out and get new friends, put yourself in new circles, find new mm -hmm. ways to have healthy relationships. Um, you need to release. Sometimes you gotta let some folks go, you know, kind of divide those relationships and then reconnect. You know, reach out to that person that you friended on Facebook yeah. that you haven't seen since college. That might be a good opportunity for you to reconnect with someone, learn how their life's gone, um, share how your life's been, et cetera, and build a, a rebuild another relationship mm -hmm. that you previously had. So those would be the three things is to reach, reconnect, and release. Nice. I love it. And I want to I wanna speak on the release part because I know that oh, yeah. that's, that's a hard Major. one for a lot of people mm -hmm. where, where they feel like, well, I have to be there because it's my mom or it's my sister or it was my best friend. And what I learned over the years is that sometimes for me to be my healthiest self yep. is I have to love people from a distance. Yep. Very right? Nice. So just because you're releasing them doesn't mean you stopped loving them. Right. You are just trying to take care of yourself. Yep. Um, so I just, again, want to thank both of you for being here and sharing your expertise with us. Um, I want to thank our studio audience as well as our viewers at home. Um, I also want to thank all of our sponsors, especially the Kowalskis in Shoreview for helping us to get this show off the ground and make it happen. Um, and so I hope that you will join us for our next episode of Good Chats. And until then, be good to yourselves and to others.